All right. Greetings. Um, <coughs> welcome to what is this? Tuesday, February 19, 2019, on Dunstan Board Commissioner's Transportation Committee meeting. Uh, we've got some new people here today, so let's just go about, uh, around the room for the record. Uh, my name is Kelly Robinson, Vice Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and Chairman of this uh, committee. Uh, Mark Hill, County Administrator. Jessica Theory, Mark's assistant. <coughs> Frederick Perry, Human Resources Director. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and Vice Chairman of the Transportation Committee. Miguel Valentine, Transportation Director. Jerry Watson, Transit Services Manager. Jamal Shepard, Transit Service Transit Coordinator. Ron Roberts, Planning Zoning Manager. Tiffany Stewart, Stealing Director of External Affairs. Welcome, y'all. Welcome. Okay. All right, Miguel, let's hit it. We've got a full agenda. Yes, sir. Um, Thank you, uh, Commissioner. We do have a full agenda, and we do have a, a number of requests to go first. Uh, I'll I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, first item then would be approval of the January 22nd meeting. Yes. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Okay. All right, uh, the first item on the agenda, uh, as it is written, is the I-20 ramps and lighting needs. Uh, we started this discussion at the last meeting, uh, but we, we wanted to flesh it out a little more. Right. Uh, so um, one, of the, one of the items, and in fact, there was some discussion at, at uh, I believe, the agenda session, uh, the USA agenda session as well. Uh, about just how much it would take, how much of an effort it would be to actually provide the proper lighting for the interchanges. And now, proper lighting uh, is relative to the design parameters for an interchange. Uh, one of the things that uh, that was suggested, and Madam Chair, I think you you found some examples of how. Rather than the high mass lighting that is typical at, at the uh, interchanges, to use regular cobra heads or something similar, and uh, there there are a few examples of that, uh, particularly in more rural areas. So I don't know to what extent uh, we would be able to go that route here in the metro area. We would have to approach uh, the DOT with, with that uh, question as to whether they would allow that. But one of the things that that uh, was part of the discussion was to the extent that there is design required to be able to move these efforts forward, we uh, would need to allocate some funding for specific projects, specific areas. And Madam Chair, uh, uh, I'll let you explain or, or go into a little detail as, as to what the options that you were looking at and for which uh, I-20 interchanges are your priority. Okay. Uh, so the, the focus for the uh, I-20 ramps would be the uh, interchanges, both the entrance, entrance and exit ramps, and starting from Thornton Road all the way to Libby, and I believe the seven uh, interchanges. Um, it would include those seven locations, which would be Gordon Road, Lee Road. Uh, I think Fairburn has something that would be set up. Fairburn has. Yes. Okay, and then Chapel, Chapel Hill, uh, Highway 5, Pulse Road, and then Lee Road. I believe I covered it all the way. Okay. And, and in terms of how many of those, was it, is it the intent to have them uh, designed as a, as a bigger project, or can those be carved off as individual projects uh, moving, moving forward? Because uh, I've, I've had design done for interchanges, and uh, when they went to construction, they usually run about $2 million to do one interchange. Just the light? Just the light. Well, it's, their, their high mass lighting is uh, usually 12, 15, up to 18 different light standards. They're 120 feet high. And so there, there's got to be design done 
around for the interchange to make sure that it is being lit uh, according to the standards. So it gets kind of elaborate. And so if that is the kind of effort that we're looking for, then that's going to require much more right. robust expenditure. And, and, and I'm looking for something more uh, conventional, just some lights so that uh, the citizens can see when they get ready to enter the freeway mm -hmm. and exit these interstates. It's extremely dark, particularly Chapel Hill. It's just really dark when you hit it west. Mm -hmm. You cannot see entering. And then my daughter the other night was driving home and we talking to me, but she had phone uh, from her speaker. She had speaker access in her car. Mm -hmm. And she said, wow, I just missed Post Road. It's dark. So I, I'm thinking uh, more line, along the lines of just the light. I'm, I'm thinking something like it would be uh, we're able to uh, obtain, I believe, 122 lights for $150,000 along that Riverside Parkway. <coughs> anyway, so I'm thinking maybe four lights or five lights per interchange or intersection so you can just see. What are you talking about? Yeah, just like. I think she's talking about, and correct me if I'm wrong, smaller lights, similar to. <coughs> Smaller street lights, like we put on the normal streets, if we can get GDOT approved. Right. And if we can get those, possibly we can partner with Greystone or Georgia Power okay. and hopefully get the same deal we got on Riverside. And that, that would be, uh, that would be okay. great if we could do that. One of the, one, when you sight lighting, particularly on high speed uh, perfect, you have to set them back away from the travel lane for safety reasons. The problem with that is a standard light that might be at 30 feet in height and, and you have to set it back 20, 30 feet is not going to light the road. So to be able to pull it forward closer to the edge of the pavement, you have to have guardrail and the guardrail itself has its own criteria. So. Uh, with that direction, Madam Chair, I will approach the DOT and see how much. Yeah, I just want to light the entrance when you, okay. you know, when you get in, and then mm -hmm. we'll uh, DOT. I have to speak to GDOT. Uh, it was indicated to me that they're getting ready to ramp up and clean up the markers, put some new markers. They are. Then you'll have some markers to bring you in, but just entering so you can see. Gotcha. Where okay. So All nothing right. elaborate, just. Okay. Yeah, that, that would be more within striking distance uh, based on yeah, striking the, distance the, the, the allocation uh, of uh, funding that we set aside, uh, the million dollars, and that, that is going to go presumably to cover multiple areas. Right. I mean, again, the intent here is not to over-design, right? We have some additional cash left over, and our goal is that how do we spread this out over all the commission districts? and get our bang for our buck. How do we um, light our freeways from a safety perspective to entrance and exit? So we're looking for bare minimum, we're looking for functionality. Don't, we shouldn't be a big old design. We don't need all that. We don't need all that aesthetics. This is not supposed to be a gateway lighting assignment. It's just supposed to be basic functionality. So to the extent, um, what was her name, Lucy or Kathy? Kathy. 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 Mm -hmm. um, to the extent that we had, um, she mentioned stripings and markings <coughs> and so forth. Um, we just wanted to add one more element to that to Madam Chair's point, which is add some additional lights at each of the four quarters. That's all we want to try to accomplish. Can we package that when we go back to them and find out where they are? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would want to confirm. So it's four, yeah, four lights at each intersection. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's it. it is in there. That's okay. it. And then when, when you start, I guess when you enter, the markers will move yeah, you further down. Because ramp. you see the, yeah, the ramps, yeah. you, know, you yeah. have the markers. And, and in fact, that project has been uh, approved and uh, the contract should start as soon as the weather breaks for the repaving of I-20 and mm -hmm. okay. new markers on edge lines. Yeah. Yes. Right. So we get that wrong? Yes, sir. That's an action item. Let's package that and let's get that as fast as you can. Okay. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is... Uh, Did you say you wanted to reset the agenda? Well, there's a couple items that... that need to be discussed. The second item that I was just about to get into is actually one that needs to be up second in the schedule. After this, we could uh, we could consider moving items up. For example, item number three, the Cochrane Industrial Boulevard, no parking zone, that could be, that could be moved down uh, towards the bottom of the agenda. 
Uh, we could go to a traffic services update, which which would be our transit services update, mm -hmm. which is would be the next item after this one. Yeah, I want to do transit because we got some visitors here that we really don't need to be here for the whole meeting. Okay. So I just uh, as soon as we're done with that, they can. You know, okay. So go ahead. Okay, so so the next item uh, we started the discussion at the last meeting, and uh, we discussed in addition to our in-house mowing. Uh, and the contract of mowing that we have done annually now for several years. I think last year we did three cycles. The year before we had done uh, three initially, one was added. So we, are, we have packaged the bid uh, to, to perform that work. And in addition, there was discussion at, at the meeting with the uh, Georgia DOT and uh, at the last committee meeting about doing supplemental mowing on state lands <coughs> as well. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, would be doing that in conjunction in, and in coordination with GDOT. Uh, they'd be happy to let us do that as long as we can do it safely and uh, use a, a GDOT certified contractor, which, which we would. Uh, the, the uh, we don't have a cost for that particular element yet. However, I wanted to give you a sense of relative uh, level of effort. The, the, the usual um, length of road that we ha contract out for mowing is 260 miles throughout the county. And we do three cycles for a total of 780 miles. The uh, state routes that we have. Say that one time, just say those numbers again. Those numbers, uh, 260 yep. lineal miles, or yep. center line miles, yep. and we do them three times under each contract for a total of 780 yep. center line miles that we do under contract. We do more than that in heaven. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, the discussion was along the lines of doing some supplemental mowing along state routes. And we, uh, we looked into what kind of effort that would be. It's a total of 87.5 miles total for state routes per cycle. And, and depending on how many cycles uh, we we would be looking to, to do would be what kind of um, expenditure we might be looking at. The way we're setting up the bid is the base bid for the work that we normally do and, and add alternate for this additional work and then we'll, we'll see where the, the bids come in and the board will have to decide at that time um, whether to move forward with this effort as a contract element or whether to look for other options. So, now, once one um, response uh, guidance that I was looking for from you at this meeting is how many cycles are you looking for in terms of the state routes? Because when we package the bid, we, we would have to let them know what kind of effort. When we want to be consistent with what we're already doing three times, what we do. Uh, I believe the state indicated that they were cutting how many. Um, Three times a year on those state routes. Initially, like initially they were doing. Uh, in fact, several years ago they were down to two times a year, but now they were up to four times a year. Mm -hmm. um, and four times a year over the mowing season is approximately every other month. So if we if we were to do four cycles in between those, mm -hmm. then the, the mowing would occur essentially once a month. Did they provide you with the calendar? Yeah, the, the exactly. We would, we would have to coordinate with them and, and find out. So, so we come in uh, midway between their mowing cycle. Okay. How much? So four four times is that? What I'm, I'm assuming once you receive the calendar, you look at the calendar and see how many times late. Um, you said four times a year or four times that, a month. That is that is my recollection of what uh, the contract was. Okay. So four times 87.5, so 360 miles. Correct. Well, that. 
Do you have a cost estimate? No, I do not have a cost estimate, but I do have a theory of relativity. Okay. Historical. Well, the, the states have yeah, this since we are working on their roads. I believe they have a package deal where they will pay us to. That that is, we'll explore that. But that is a, a different, um, a different uh, agreement. Okay. This one, this one would be essentially we would have the contractor do the county roads. Uh, it usually takes them about a month to get the recycle, and then. After that, they would begin the state route, so we would have to coordinate that work uh, because essentially they would be doing the mowing for us every other month, and in between they would be doing the state route mowing if that's how we want to package this. Uh, but the, I, I wanted to get a sense for because we have to put this out for bids uh, the next week or so. Yeah. I was I was under the impression that our team, the four men that you talked about last mm -hmm. year, would be able to <coughs> absorb that uh, level of responsibility and not all the state routes just maybe the Fairburn Road you know, it's, it's been a bone of contention for us um, it, and not just cutting we want to have it edged and manicured to have a pristine look so I'm just wondering I know it's easy to well it's easy for me to say cut I don't cut but uh, but if we could get someone to not just roll over it but edge it make it look nice we need to think about Maybe some seeds, sprinkle some seeds along the airborne road. I had a couple of uh, citizens complain, uh, said, you know, it's just it's a gateway to the airport uh, going toward South Fulton uh, area, and they said it's just drab. So I was just wondering, seeds. Uh, Commissioner Robinson, can you chime in a little bit? We talked about maybe some Please. Hello. Uh, so, so again, Miguel, um, I, I, I got a question <coughs> for you. Um, this extra mowing. Uh, it would bid that out. Um, it would have to be a DOT contractor, right? They would have to be able to maintain <coughs> that standard, right? So they would have to meet those standards, but the one that we use typically, they're also DOT certified. They are certified, okay. All right, so we don't want to go backward in quality. You just can't, um, anybody can't just do this, right? Because you don't bear the road, you're in the middle of, you know, that's, that's, that's major. So my question is, you didn't give us a cost, though. I still, I, I, I you know, I got yeah, I was about to get into the theory of relativity because uh, the, the mowing that we do on county roads is has been running us about three hundred thousand a year uh, <coughs> to recycle, so about a hundred thousand per cycle. Okay, and and that is the, the mowing that we would be doing on on the state routes is about half of our total. So it's looking like. If the unit pricing is about the same, it'd be about one hundred fifty thousand. But with the extra manicure, manicure may have to go up a little bit more. They have to spend a little bit more time, or will they be able to knock it all out with that same cost? Uh, it, it depends. Um, the traffic control that is required along state routes is more intense than on county roads, so the unit pricing may be higher. Uh, but but sort of, it's in that relative range of 150 uh, plus a little more. Cool. But, uh, okay, but back to the point, um, we're going back to, you know, beautifying Douglas County, um, raising the standard. Um, I know we have um, traditionally been um, a, a rural field, but we're, we're, we've grown up. And so now, you know, people say they want to experience their tax dollars on a daily basis. They want to at least be able to pull out their subdivisions, out their neighborhood, out their driveways, onto a paved road. But they also want to see in those main thoroughfares, like, can you pick up the trash? Can you cut the grass? Right? They're not saying all the rural parts of the county. They're not talking about all the forests, all the trees. We're just talking about those key aesthetic areas. And so um, what we're trying to say is, um, for the committee, we need to make a decision to, to agree to move forward with this, which is a bit more money, commit to this. Um, you said this is ready to go now? Is that what I heard earlier? We, yeah, <coughs> as, soon as, as soon as we determine how many cycles to include on the state uh, component, we'll be ready to back. Are we required to maintain the four? Or we're doing three now. Can we do three, or do we have to maintain what they currently do, which is four? I'm fine. I just want to know the answer. We could, we could do as, uh, as many or as few as, as we want. It's, it's open. The, the concept was, as part of our discussion at the meeting with the DOT, that 
because they're mowing every other month, essentially. Mm -hmm. If we were able to come in in between mowings then, and match their, their, their cycle, then that would allow for more consistent mowing. Mm -hmm. And so the four cycles kind of falls out of that equation. But if you, if you, wanna, if you wanted to consider three, you could do that. And of course, we have to be strategic about that. To make sure those cycles are during the most intense mowing season. Okay. What well, about those please. key areas, those key state areas? They're the ones that the state votes that has a lot of options that uh, should be aesthetically pleasing. And there was a lot of visibility. Uh, I'm thinking Fairburn Road. What road did you have in mind? That's one that I've got. Well, to we, we, we looked at all doing all the state routes. Such 70, as Bank Hill? 78. Uh, well, Veterans Memorial now, Highway 5, 166, 92, Thornton Road. Um, and then uh, one thing to, to also keep in mind relative to this effort is as we begin to add uh, components of uh, beautification or lighting at interchanges, GDOT is going to require that we assume responsibility for maintenance. So at that point, we might be looking at having this component with that go together and the county would uh, perhaps look at whether this is better done in-house than having it come back. Okay, don't shift yet. Hold on. Let's, let's come back to, let's disagree as an objective that we want to do these this additional cycles uh, according to this manicured approach and mark are you okay with four versus three i'm, I'm really okay four cycles versus three on the state route mm -hmm. yeah i mean it coincides with, with g dots with g dots okay you might as well do four mm -hmm. all right so let's agree that we're going to do four um, we can always back up yeah but uh, before we get into packaging i just want to agree that that's what we want to go do mm -hmm. But the four cycles, but also who's going to pull the weeds and that because it's easy to cut. But if you're not pulling weeds and making things look appealing, it's still just a waste of time. So but again, you're clear on what, yeah, what, what she's asking for, it's right? It's manicure. It's 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 trash. It's cutting. It's edging. Um, all those things. Now, to the extent we're talking about pulling weeds, hopefully you're not talking about like <coughs> in the backyard and stuff. But you know, <laughs> those man, you know, there's nothing but weeds out there because we're in the rural. But but you get the spirit of it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just something that's doable. Um, oh, along the, um, what do you call the medium areas, that's what I'm saying, not weeds all over the place, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You have the little concrete medians going through. Sometimes you have weeds coming up along those when you're driving down Fairburn Road here towards the Okay, south. all right. Those things, not weeds all over the place. Okay, now I... Yeah, I just want to be more specific. I need to be okay. specific. Along the mediums, the weeds and things that are not so aesthetically pleasing. Okay. That, yeah, that's going to take uh, more hand work, and so the price is going to go up a little bit. But we, we can package that for those key areas. And you mentioned Fairburn. Uh, Fairburn is one area that comes to mind. I'm trying to think. I, I guess we're going to have to ride in look at it. Like, yeah. Just those key areas that are highly traveled. Thornton Road has medians now that uh, could potentially fall into the same category. Can be strategic. Um, take a look at it. So we're going to at least commit to the four cycles that you'll come up with. Um, the ones that are necessary in, in the distance. Um, Madam Chair mentioned something about like, not necessarily landscaping, but seeding. I don't know. I don't know anything about I'm not agreeing with them, but perennials or annuals, you know, you know, something that just comes back. I mean, again, back to the point, let's just give a little pop, a little something that, that's not a high maintenance that'll just, you know, maintain itself. Is that doable? I mean, I've been in certain parts of, of the state and you've seen nothing but, you know, flowers or um, bushes or you know, whatever the case may be, but can we keep it simple? Unfortunately, simple is a relative term that eludes us sometimes. Uh, but there's a number of components. One, you, you might recall at the last meeting with the DOT, they indicated they were going to come through between Thornton Road and uh, Highway 5, I believe, mm -hmm. and, and peel back the tree line. Right. So, so we don't want to be uh, in the mix with that, we'll, we'll let that work play sure. out, and then and then we can revisit what, what we do in those areas. But, 
Um, okay, so let's we don't know. Yeah, we don't know the extent of what we would be getting into. We'll say it's a part B part of that, Madam Chair, but we'll come back with the, the flowering for the sake of a conversation. I just don't want to get behind on this. Um, if we got to go, we've got to go now uh, to, to be on cycle when um, obviously it's treat um, grass cutting season, which is what, March? Or April. All right, so let's, let's, let's get uh, these, uh, a call to action, a single event. Are we agreeing to four? Four cycles. Mm -hmm. sure. That's for state. Right. The state routes. We just, so that He's going to come back with the specific routes to go along with that, but we're at least agreeing. I, I want to keep this moving. Because mm -hmm. again, we tabled this last, you know, so that we didn't right. get into this. So, four cycles. Um, you're going to come up with a, a, a better cost, and you're going to come up with a specific um, roads. Right. Mm -hmm. One six six is in this one. Anything where there's a medium concrete area, sometimes it will weeds are coming up through. I think this is a ground up. They do it. I'm not sure. Just get those weeds. But yeah, we can we can package something <laughs> for for additional effort. Uh, you know what she's asked me to write. I, I realized that, but I didn't <laughs> want to get into into she, that. She's working you like okay, you will commit. To, okay, I don't <laughs> see that price. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right, repair. Yeah, we, we, we I got we, it. Thank you. I, 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 I think we're clear. Yeah. yeah, you got this. Yes, sir. Mark. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So now we can we can uh, move up the transit services uh, component. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll turn it over to Gary. Yeah, so, sure. so, so, so you're going to come back with a formal, what to cost all of this, and then we'll make a formal recommendation to the full board of commissioners. So is that accurate? Uh, okay, you're not doing it now. You're just agreeing to go away and, and clarifying what we're asking for, right? Well, typically, there, there's a component of this that is sort of operational mm -hmm. because it's budgeted for. And, so and you that's the money? Yes. No, he does for that. that. For, for, yeah, that I for the county roads, I have the I have the funds. What I don't have the funds for is the additional. But um, in terms of how much is it going to cost, it, it, it's going to be in that range. And and there is no good way for me to hone in on a better estimate for it, other than actually bidding it out and seeing what it comes in at. So essentially, what I was what I was anticipating doing was. Once I had the number of cycles for the state component, yes. I would package this, bid it out, and then present it to the board and, and essentially say the base bid for what we are budgeted for is 300, whatever thousand, and the additional for the state routes, once we agree on all the details, is going to be 150,000. Okay. And you make the decision at that time. And I would like to sign more funding for the additional. For the additional. Correct. Okay. I, I would also like to see you approach the state and say we have taken on this additional responsibility and see if they would work with us on some additional funding. Because if we go the other way and take the roads completely, they will supplement our ability uh, to do, the, you know, to perform our duty. So see if she will work with us. Kathy say, uh, I would like say she may get work with us on the uh, I certainly will, will approach her about that. Um, so okay. So are we are we in agreement with that administrative concurrence? Yes. Administrative concurrence for for our budgeted items, and then this additional will be at your discretion when the pricing comes in. Mm -hmm. We've got an act on it this time, but you need to go ahead and pass it. So right. yes, we get a motion to get the administrative concurrence. We can get a move forward, Mark. Uh, make a motion to that effect. For the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, you good? Good. All right. Sorry, Yes. All right. We have uh, Danielle Hoover and Danielle Crow from the collaborative firm here. Welcome. To, to give us an update. And Danielle Crow is, is here to tell us what's going on. Good afternoon. Yes, my name is Danielle Crow, and I'll be providing the update on behalf of the collaborative firm with regard to Connect Douglas's um, marketing and continued education campaign. As he acknowledged, I do have a colleague here today, Danielle Hoover. Um, I'll, I'll forward this information again electronically. We have a few more guests today than normal at the Transportation Committee meeting, but I'll just provide a brief update. Some of the items that we have completed recently and also have in queue 
Our first and foremost, we recently participated in the City of Douglasville retreat, um, where we provided an overview of services to Mayor Robinson and the Council on February 8th. Um, TCF provided creative and technical development of the presentation, and we also served as fellow uh, presenters along with, uh, of course, Gary uh, Watson, Jamal Shepard, and Justin Risen of um, Transit for You, <coughs> Transit Services. Sorry, I always remember their websites. Catch your website. Uh, one of the next big initiatives we have coming forward is our Connect Douglas Fixed Route promotional video. That's something that's been in the queue or I've been pressing forward since last year. Um, but we have, we're at the point now where we have developed a creative concept and a uh, complete with the script, visual treatment and shot recommendations. And that's received approval from Gary. And so now we're collaborating with Rick Martin in the Office of Communication to uh, allocate the resources to move forward with the shooting. Um, that video will be utilized in presentations that we make for outreach, as well as it will serve as the basis for PSAs on social media. It will be shortened some when we put it on social media, but it was necessary to make sure that we had all the pertinent information. So right now, runtime is something like four minutes, which still isn't long. Um, the, Rick really liked the concept and felt that he would also use this as a jumping off point for a segment, a full segment on one of the DCT 23 shows. So that's something that's in the works. One of the, the next bigger initiatives will be our Community Connections Lunch and Learn. Uh, this was a concept that was actually proposed early on in the first phase of the rebranding and education program. That communication plan is more than 60 pages long and is chock full of all sorts of nuggets that we are um, intermittently getting to implement. And so I'm excited to move forward with that. Uh, it's very important that we touch the people who are touching the people that we want to reach. We alone can't reach everyone. But when we reach out to the people who um, provide social services, to fellow government agencies, uh, to people in the school system, we then make them ambassadors and conduits of this information. And so we've tried to do that on several fronts. But now we've gone out to their sites, now we want to bring them home. So what we plan to do, our first one is scheduled March 19th. We are inviting these representatives uh, to come to uh, the Transportation Center uh, because we want to tell them about all of the services, not only the fixed route bus system, but also this, the senior voucher program, um, the, the van pools, all of our services, as well as see the site. Because some of the representatives that we're meeting now, like Ms. Smith, who works with homeless students, or Mr. Roach, who, who is, uh, coordinates all the social services, they need to see and hear where they're going to be directing people. And so we want to welcome them in. Uh, we're, we're also going to give them an abbreviated um, route review on one of the fixed routes. Can, can, when you get a chance to make a note, um, I'd like to see the list of agencies you're reaching out to, like CSB. Okay. Um, defects. I just want to make sure. Okay, and actually, um, I'm glad that you mentioned them because some of those places on the second sheet is where we have done in the past week and a half, or past two weeks, I should say, that I have personally done uh, lit drops and community outreach visits to Boys and Girls Club, Douglas County Board of Education, um, Disability Coalition, Murray Annex. Uh, Wellstar Douglas Hospital. So like not only just going to the hospital and to the information desk or to the cafeteria, but also going and speaking to the people who are the care coordinators. Because when people uh, schedule surgery, sometimes they are disabled but only temporarily, but they still can qualify for services or need help. So we're reaching out all along those lines. Um, WorkSource Georgia. Um, they took over the space in the United Way. I mean, she literally hugged me when I told her about the fixed route system. <laughs> so there are people who are eager for these services, but the frontline workers who interact directly with the people who are potential riders need this information. Uh, Douglas County Division of DFACS is what you called it. Right. Division of Family and Children's Services. Division of Human Services, so the Labor Department right in the same building. Uh, Strayer University and the Douglas County Tag Office. Those are just in the past two weeks. So it is not the, an exhaustive list, but this is where we went personally and did site visits and spoke to people and, you know, and had a chat. 
as well as bring across information. There is a whole list of uh, people, and of course, we open that to recommendations as well of who we will be inviting. In addition to people who um, do social services and other agencies, we're also going to do one specific to businesses, large employers, especially those within that employment hub. And with that, a lot of times at the chamber, we're meeting people who are representatives of the business. But with this, we want to hone in on people who are the HR representatives, who are the benefits coordinators, because they know the task at hand of, are we having problems recruiting people because they don't have transportation, or they can put that benefit information in the right hands. So that's the concept. Like I said, the first one will be March 19th, but this is the first of a series uh, of Lunch and Learns called Community Connections. Um, We've done um, significant development where it relates to collateral material. We've developed new routes in collaboration with the GIS uh, department here. We have also um, submitted initial drafts of all the fare and discount cards for the bus passes, and that's been reviewed with Gary and the team. Uh, we've also developed a new multi-fold multi brochure for the fixed bus route system, and we hope to have that in print in, and then being delivered in places by the end of this month. But we were really careful with that design because we wanted all the route maps included and all the pertinent information. And so that's the gist of collateral material. Gary, can you ensure that the board commissioners get this set of documents? Absolutely. Uh, yes, uh, I want to make sure that we've had a chance to sort of look at this and we even understand what it is before it goes out to the mass market. Uh, sure. Since we've got to go live. So. And the board commissioners need to see it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Keep going. Thank you. And these are the drafts currently, Vice Chairman. Thank so um, next on the front of social media and digital communications, our social media accounts continue to grow. We're engaging people with weekly posts. And uh, I want to clarify because I, I, I heard some discussion recently. Anything that we do, uh, the collaborative firm does not have the ability to post or uh, release any information on behalf of the county. We don't. Uh, we have implemented our own social policy, which has been blessed uh, by the client, where they approve before we post anything. Additionally, when we draft releases, it goes to the Office of Communications, it's vetted by Rick Martin, and then he disseminates that. And so that's to ensure that we're always in line with the county's full communication uh, policies. Um, but nevertheless, we continue to grow. We have approximately 175 active members. Uh, and we've received approval for a concept that we had during March to celebrate Women's History Month. And I just want to acknowledge uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Goddard, and Commissioner Carthen. Thank you so much for being so willing uh, to be featured. Um, the name of the campaign is called Women Drive Progress. And I can't think of a more powerful portrait of progress and leadership than seeing our female elected representatives pictured together. So thank you for doing that. They're taking their photo tonight uh, at the beginning of the BOC meeting. So Wonderful. they, along with other leaders in Douglas County, are going to be featured through the, the month of March on our social media. Very good. OK. And then lastly, um, we incorporated the, the digital newsletter template that we had talked about for some time. That went out in February. Um, for the, the Connect Douglas newsletter that um, replaced what, they were, what we were using before, mm -hmm. as well as we designed some promotional flyers for the van pools, and that was included in the Douglas County happenings, as well as we got some um, information that's just kind of outdated in that email blast removed uh, mm -hmm. that still referred to rideshare. We know that old habits die hard and so we want to make sure that consistently we're using the correct brand and name. And then the last item was what we've already touched on was the literature drops community outreach slash visits and calls. Of course this is just the highlights of what's been going on but this is what we have to share in our two minutes a lot. Yeah, no, thank you. I got a couple of thoughts for anybody. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, um, just listening to everything that um, you just said, Danielle, it's very, it sounds very effective, the video, and um, definitely the drop-ins, and then the campaign with the commissioners, I think, will be very receptive as far as from a public engagement standpoint. It sounds like a very solid plan. Yeah. Okay, so here's, here's my question. Because I, I felt much better when you talked about you want to hit those agencies, you know, those 
touch points. Um, but again, it's a very small people um, the people who actually go to our website, get what's happening, but get press releases. It, it's a small population. It's, you know, it's 15,000 people at most. It's 150,000 people in, in the county, right? It's like 10%. And so, and I know you're going to go to these agencies and so forth, but I'm, I'm looking for that, how do we hit everybody? Seeing that historically, what, 80% of people still didn't know the current services we already offer, let alone a new one. Um, um, is there something like a direct mail piece? Uh, something that, like, look, we need to hit them and let them know. We can't just assume they're going, they're going to learn about this or that somebody's going to tell them about this. Is that to, to get participation, uh, it can't be reactionary, like, okay, if I've got a, a public health issue or I'm going to CSB or I got defects, right? That, 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 that assumes I have a, a need for a service. They need it, but there's other people who need transportation that's independent of that. So how do we have this big broad net? And I think it may, it may be in here. I haven't it, read it. I, so I concur. So that's why this third piece is being developed. This is the phase that we are at this time, and this is it, the two-minute update that's being provided. So the brochure, the multifold brochure that includes the routes and the specific information on the fares, which was just approved, and the operating hours, it's what's gonna go out to the masses. So that distribution plan is not listed in this update. So we have contacts with the housing authorities. We've looked at pockets where there's potential ridership. We've looked at pockets where there are transient dependent people. We've looked at places like the Lithia Springs Library where we know they have a large walk-in population. So those are the places where when we gain that knowledge during the public input process, we make note of that and that's going to drive this distribution portion. Of course, everything is always contingent upon budget. This multifold brochure that's going to be delivered in those places can also be modified to direct mail if budget allows for it. We can also do door knockers. We can do canvas campaigns if we so allot them. You remember, I, you know, I. Yeah, we we talked. No, um, you're, you're good. You're on point. And, and, okay, so just, just bear, bear with me just for a second. I think we appreciate your update. And, and you, you did a wonderful job. Um, we assumed, you know, barring the federal government um, um, shenanigans, um, that we would um, go live on April 1st for spring. I'm thinking, relatively speaking, we're thinking May. Yeah. Just relatively speaking, May 1st. Yes. Right, so this is soon, it's March 1st, for the sake of conversation. That's two months, right? We can't wait until, what, what I want to avoid, and again, we would have been going live on April 1st. We got a pass, we, get, we bought some time. I just, what I, I just want assurance that we're not waiting to the very last minute to message this and say, hey, we live, come get on this bus. On May 1st, I don't want to be the only person on that bus because nobody know about this, right? And, and so what I, what I want to make sure that the people really know about this. Um, and I, I get costs, but I guess it, it's, it's a function of, but if they don't know about it, they can't get on it. And so um, and maybe you, um, maybe take away Gary's uh, work with Danielle and come up with what that cost could be if in fact we need to go direct, if the Board of Commissioners want a higher level of assurance that works with nobody beyond what you're doing. So I'm not diminishing or marginalizing what I'm listening to. I just want to make sure we hit this. I don't want to be, we've been in the, the you know, Greta game for what, 13 years or so. You know, you know, a lot of people don't even know about it, that we offer those services. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want, I don't want to repeat the wheel per se. Um, so we want to hire, you know, as they say, high probability. So if I may add, within our recommendations, there are media buys and placements for billboards. There are stand-ups for the mall. There's a um, wide myriad of options that are available. All of those are dependent upon budget. So whatever direction you all choose to go in, we can pivot. But we have made those recommendations. No, no, okay, I'm with you. So we, we, you're getting guidance from us now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, billboards, no. Everybody doesn't see that. They're too busy on their text. That's not going to be able to be effective. Um, I mean, grocery stores, everybody goes to get food. Somebody goes either to a Target or a Walmart, right? So you, you got to think about it. If you're going to go to places, go, go where the people are going to go, right? But I'm still thinking the direct mail is just, everybody gets it, right? I don't care if it's a statement stuffer with a um, uh, tax commission. That's allowed by law. But I'm just saying that um, um, none of this fancy, like, no, 
door knocking. I mean, if you've ever done a, an election and campaigning, you knock on them doors. I mean, it's nothing about getting that, that postcard and that takeaway and that keeper. And so if it's the quality I think that you've created, they're going to hold on to that, right? And so just let's not belabor it. We're not going to solve it here, Gary. But just make that note sure. to come back to us. But, but excellent, but recognizing many persons around the corner. Right? All things being equal, all things that I know operationally, we've got some things we still need to do. we got to put some stuff in play. But I, w I wanted this meeting and this update, and Danielle, thank you, just to set everybody's expectation. That's why I invited some extra guests. I thank my colleagues for being back there. So I'm like, okay, it's around the corner now. Let's make sure that all of our media are on point. All of our communications are on point. And it's not saying that you didn't. You just had to say it for the record. Here? Yep. They're working hard every day. Uh, and, and the word is getting out, the number of phone calls and inquiries that are coming into our office about the bus service is increasing every day. So what we're doing is working, but that by no means suggests that our work is, is done. As Danielle has said, we've still got a lot to do. I understood. I understood. I get marking. We got it. Um, there's some operational things we're still doing. Um, Acquisition, <coughs> receipt of the buses, mm -hmm. getting those wrapped up, or what do you call it, wrapping them, mm -hmm. uh, getting that done, um, um, getting our shelters and our bus. You know, see, there's you know, some things that we just need. Yeah, I know that you have to lock up, but make first of all, spring is around the corner. I'll put it that way. I'll change my, my comments. But at some point, not now, and again, that May 1st is my date. That is nothing that the committee or the board of commissioners has declared per se. Our party line is spring. Correct. All right, so I want to be clear on that. But all the, but at some point, you've got to call it. At some point, there's got to be a go live date because people got to know when they got to go out there and step out there and get on the bus. So you, it can't be just relative spring and this it's, it's like, no, guys, they need to know when it's live or else you're going to have this lag where it's going to be running around and nobody knows it's out there because you haven't told them the date they can go step out there. So. All right, Mark, anything else on this one? Because you want a deeper? Uh, on this one? Yeah. No, we're good. No, we're good. Madam Chair? Yeah, I just have one comment. Please. Um, comment. First of all, thank you so much. Thank you. you all are doing a fantastic job. appreciate what you and collaborative firm are doing, and also along with our uh, uh, directors and uh, managers. You are just blown away. But I have one question. Will there be a pilot type of program set up? Just maybe 30 days where you trial it, a trial period to make sure that we everything, all the dots are being connected. Can you speak to that? Would that be you, there, Director there will, Yes, ma'am, there will be. I don't know that we'll go a full 30 days with the, with the pilot, but uh, maybe a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll actually run the routes at all different times, uh, morning peak, uh, p.m. peak. Uh, we'll actually run the stops, the routes where we're making all the stops that we have planned on the, the routes to get our timing down. So yes, we will. We will definitely have test drives before we go live with everything. Okay. And uh, this is just another uh, footnote. I just wanted to make known to our uh, transportation committee. I had lunch with Chairman Boyce last week. He's the chairman of the uh, Cobb County Board of Commissioners, and he is considering Douglas County as he wrote. He said he will be. What they're looking at now, smaller buses like the cutaways that we have for doing those non-peak hours. Uh, because of some complaints from citizens, citizens saying that the buses were empty. So he just wanted to say kudos to Douglas County. And he wanted me to give just special regards to everybody that's working because he said we are now the model okay. for transportation. Well, that's we, fantastic. We have a good relationship with Cobb. We, we work with them closely, and, and Jamal has done a great job being in our, our contact with Cobb. If I may add, that was also noted during the Douglas County Chamber luncheon when um, Scott, I think it's Scott Haggard. Haggard from the ATL uh, commended Douglas County once again for partnering and having that uh, vision to put in some connectivity, uh, to not think just about your area. And Madam Chair, that brought me, it reminded me of one of our first conversations before we developed the logo, that we didn't have, we couldn't just think about within <coughs> Douglas County, but we had to think regionally. And so for us to get those kudos at the um, at that level, I think it's <coughs> a big deal. Excellent. All right, guys, we got to keep this going. Maybe I'll Gary. I just want to add, I mean, again, this was your moment to give a brief update. Um, but are you okay? Yes, sir.
I think Danielle did a great job. Excellent job. You have all the chances. <laughs> all right, um, everybody, Tiffany, you guys can leave if you want to. Thank you so much. Uh, somebody else who came just for that. Danielle, let's keep it moving. Okay, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, there is uh, another component of transit. I don't know if, uh, if you can wait. Okay, yeah. I, what I would like to do is move uh, the uh, the CDAP application community development uh, assistance program. assistance program. Uh, okay. uh, the, the the window for being able to apply is now open, and it ends towards the end of March, as I recall. That's correct. And uh, so we, we've talked to, uh, we've, uh, our staff here has talked about, uh, the planning staff has talked about different areas that potentially we could apply for, and uh, uh, Ron is going to give us an update on what, uh, what the thinking is. So we're here to play. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate your time today. So February 6th was a workshop rollout at ARC, and I went to that. Now, we, we had known that the, they, had, they were going to make some changes to the LCI program, which is the Livable Centers Initiative program. Um, they, um, they call it LCI 2.0. Uh, so what they did was they took the funding that normally would be allocated towards mostly like regional uh, and uh, suburban communities like ours, and they're kind of like taking it and, and focusing that, that LCI money inside where major transit hubs are. So like around uh, MARTA or Gwinnett or things like that. The funding mechanism that would now be available to us, and staff has had to kind of like redo this because, you know, we went through a process last year where we updated the Sweetwater Master Plan because we were going to apply for an LCI. Mm -hmm. So what would happen now is those large capital investments normally that I would be trying to go for in an LCI, that's what he's going to be, Miguel's going to be putting in for, for, for a tip. Um, so, but that doesn't mean that we don't have opportunities. We certainly do. Uh, and so I had a really nice conversation with Miguel uh, last week, and we talked about, um, because he's right, the uh, uh, March 29th is the due date. So I would have to get between now and I guess the, the, the March 4th, 5th BOC work session or the one after, I need to get, I would want to bring this back for approval. And it would include a, a support letter from, from that chair and then um, a support letter from GDOT mm -hmm. and some other things I'd have to pull together. Uh, and so, so where we're at with it is uh, there's a list of, 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 there's policies, education, and capital programs. And I was thinking about, in talking to Miguel, we could roll in, there is no more money for safe routes to school. Mm -hmm. that, that went away a long time ago. But here's a component within this funding stream that allows for sidewalks and, and a, a safe routes to school program and, and things like that. This does a couple of things. One, it'll get these, it'll get sidewalks around three of the schools that are located in the Lee Road corridor specifically, which are the uh, Lithia Springs, Lee Road, Elementary, Chapel Hill schools. Now the funding for these are still the same. It's going to be an 80-20 match, and that's a, that's a decision the county's going to need to make. And to Miguel's point, I love this. He said this at a couple of meetings back. He, he talked about planning dollars. All I have is planning dollars, very large <laughs> concepts about what I think a sidewalk is. I was over here looking for, for to, to drill down on exactly what that would be. So say it's, you know, say it's a quarter of a mile with $250,000 worth of sidewalks around the school or something like that, mm -hmm. then, then that's something that uh, commissioners have to decide if they want to do that or not. But it, it accomplishes a couple of things. So in addition to providing infrastructure that connects to the corridor, it'll add safety components. And a lot of these programs are also eligible for the ARC's Green Communities Program, which as you remember last year, we kind of just went into the silver level. Mm -hmm. Well, this will get us well into the silver level and, and, and more, I guess, if we, can, if we could do these things. Because mm -hmm. they include certain things like uh, the installing of uh, the, the material, educational materials around stormwater features. Uh, we talked about the safe routes to school. We talked about the, the, the actual physical infrastructure and that. And, and right now, I've just got to, I got to drill down on that and, and come back with, with, with a good number for you guys mm -hmm. and let you make that decision. And I, because I didn't want to hit you cold with it in a month, I wanted to have the opportunity today to tell you this is kind of where I'm going. 
solicit any feedback, direction that you may have, and then I'll work on it and bring it back forward. Quick thought. So, um, being a, two things, I mean, I appreciate this sort of the, the heads up, um, the committee perspective. And so, Miguel, um, you believe this committee should weigh on, in on this because it has a sidewalk, a sidewalk component to it that addresses Correct. Our, our needs. Correct. Um, and, it, and it is one of the categories that lends itself uh, strategically to this particular grant. Mm -hmm. um, March 29th? Yes, sir, that's the due date. Um, I, I think there's a broader conversation with the full board regarding this. Um, I, I don't disagree regarding um, um, sidewalks as an element of it, but um, because we're shifting away from an LCI or the got reprogrammed or whatever it did, right. and we've got this, I just want to make sure that we afford the full board a chance to, to sort of hear this conversation because it is a commitment, it is an 80 20. Um, I think as a committee, we can support it and recommend it up. Um, but to your point, you haven't quite told us exactly what we're, what we're going for. So today is not really an ask, right? It's just Correct. more of a FYI. Informational at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You move in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I okay, so I, I support as an administrative concurrence, add sidewalks mm -hmm. as much as you can. So we, to that extent, I, I guess we can do that in committee, but I'd like the full board to hear this one. Because LCI is something that's always been there, especially down that um, 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 Fairville Road all the way down to the river, mm -hmm. and we finally have shifted. I finally learned what it was, and now you've shifted on us, and, and, and it's no not your fault. No, 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 <laughs> but you get the point. So right. um, let, let's have some thought on this, um, not to slow us down, but Mark, is it, if it, it's okay with you, can we get John in front of the full board at our next board mm -hmm. commissioners meeting? The authorization to apply for CDAP grant? Right. Yeah, just add that to the next agenda. Making sure we get the details and signs up. Yes, sir. Be glad to do it. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Two weeks. Well, he can get authorization to apply. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he can get the application by the 29th. And then in the main, meantime, right. go ahead and be working behind the scenes. And if we've got cost estimates, things of that nature, by the time we come up to the first meeting, we can provide what we have, but we have to have it by the end of the with right. the authorization to apply, yes. he needs some letter of commitment. So if, if the authorization uh, can be on the agenda for the first meeting and then the commitment uh, be voted on the second meeting, does that give you enough time? That, that gives you about a few days before the thing is due, but mm -hmm. will that work? Yeah, I mean, as, as, as far as, I mean, they may even, I don't know. Maybe I got enough grace down there I could push it, but but I, if I'm really going to hit March 29th, and I think we can it'll be on both agendas. Then I'll get uh, I'll get with Travis, try to get the cost estimates down on some of these different things that that, that, that cost that, estimates, locations, but, yeah, but, specific. But, but if if you're going to to get authorization to apply, do you really need to come back and get commitment? Is that commitment? And I think yeah, I've already uh, asked for the authorization to apply, if I'm not mistaken. Well, when we submitted for the, when we when we submitted for the for the, yeah, it was two weeks ago. Right, yeah. that included that ask. Mm -hmm. But just now we now I'm just trying to get specifics down. Okay. Well, yeah, if that's the case, then no, you're you should be fine. Okay. Um, but, but he, if we're he is commit. Yeah, he is going to need a letter of commitment yes, to the for the twenty percent. So we need to know what that is. Yeah, yeah what, what, what that, that is, is. And, and who, where is that going to be sourced from? Okay. Yeah. Um, any thoughts? Uh, at the risk of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Miguel. Go ahead. Man. Yes, <laughs> I, I think to the extent that the SWAST has the uh, program has a a sidewalk. Component to it, that would be a logical place to put it. Now there might be some some residual just, funding in the side in the county sidewalk program. I checked on that, and yeah. and it, and I did after our conversation. I made a beeline over to Travis, and I was very surprised to find out there's only about ten or fifteen thousand in that. The tree fund, however, is doing extremely yeah. well. Well, the sidewalk fund is normally zero. Yeah, well, we so got to have fifteen thousand. Yeah, he, he said ballpark. So you yeah. said no. I, I would, yeah. yeah, I I think for purposes of this, because really it is it is uh, a component that 
absent this grant, we would be pursuing under SPLOS. Mm -hmm. We've already got three in play, right? Mm -hmm. Under SPLOS. Well, there's your source. It's good. It's lost. Yes. Okay. okay. I'll be specific in that line item when I when I put it in too. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Ron. And, sure. Thank and, you. Guys. Uh, rather than a specific number, when when you request uh, authorization, you you could couch it as not to exceed. I like a certain that. Amount. Because uh, exceed. yeah, because. It, you only you only learn the exact number when you bid out the project. You don't want to be in a, in a, in a situation where you're ten dollars short. Now you got to go back to to the board for ten bucks. So not to exceed that. No, we don't want to miss the estimate. No, and I don't want to miss this opportunity for the county either. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Sure. Okay, Miguel. Keep going. Keep us moving. Okay. Very good. Um, we're going to double back to transit services and uh, have a discussion about the next phase of transit planning, uh, the ATL Atlanta Transit Link Agency is now uh, in the process of developing the regional long range uh, transit plan and they are requesting input from all uh, the counties and municipalities as to what plans, what projects, what efforts need to be incorporated into the plan. Uh, and these elements have to be adopted and in the plan before they are approved to move forward, uh, unless they're fully funded by the county. If there's any kind of state or federal funding, they have to be part of the plan. So Gary, you want to sure. <clears throat> Miguel explained it pretty well. Uh, this is a joint project uh, by the new ATL and the Atlanta Regional Commission. Um, it's they're putting together their first regional transit program and regional transportation program, which in essence will be our blueprint for transit programs moving forward in both sh short term uh, and long term. Mm -hmm. They've asked us to submit our list of projects uh, to them by March the 15th. And so this is the, the first pass of projects that we we will consider putting into our, our program. It covers pretty much everything that we would want to do in transit moving forward, expanding our van pool program, expanding the voucher program, uh, expanding fixed route, and also implementing demand response service uh, throughout the, the county. Um, a lot of other things in there related to operational costs, um, improving facilities, uh, software, hardware, um, everything that we feel like we would need moving forward and we just wanted uh, there's no action required by the committee today we just wanted uh, to present this list to you for you to be able to take a look at uh, to see if you have any questions about it if, see if there's any other projects that you want to include on on the list and uh, if you can get back with us say about by about March the 8th with any comments or thoughts you have on it then we'll go ahead and incorporate it into the plan and submit it to the ARC. Mm -hmm. so, and again you know, I'll have a little small for me to read but I'll, I'll take a look at it. Can you see me electronic copy? Certainly. Right. Uh, one thing uh, just for clarification purposes Gary uh, this is a a long range similar to to my discussion um, at the BFC meeting uh, yesterday at the agenda session as it related to the transportation side where you know we, we have a long-term um, window of, of projects right this is that longer term window of projects on the transit side mm -hmm. so any any future expansion of whether it be additional bus routes, uh, uh, different type of configuration, uh, different ways of linking up with our neighbors. Uh, right now we're 
uh, considering linking with Cobb uh, and their system. Uh, if we wanted to, for example, have an express line to uh, downtown Atlanta, right. that would have to be on here in order for us to, uh, for the uh, uh, ATL board to consider it as a project that they would approve as part of the regional system. So it's a placeholder. So mm -hmm. to your point, um, we already got Greta, but expansion of Greta, I don't know, I mean, we're putting it out there what we need. These are options. Are we really committing? Because again, it, it's all relative, right? Depends on how things move. So what, what are we really saying? It, it's not a commitment at this point. Right. 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 And here's, here's where I was going with that. So we talked a little bit earlier about uh, connecting with Kyle, but um, you said it's like we weren't connecting. Are we connecting with Kyle? Yes, we are. Yes, okay. Absolutely. So it's scared me. Scared me. Okay. Don't <laughs> use the words, maybe. You're like, what now? Like, we're well, thinking of working with Kyle. Like, what now? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. No, no, but, but to that point, in the event that um, I'm going back to regionalism, I'm going back to this whole concept of, but um, if I know, go back to District 8 for the ATL. Go back to, we've got Cobb and South Fulton, um, and City of Atlanta for that matter. And they, uh, they're expanding MARTA. Um, um, I guess it's light rail. Is it light rail? Light rail. MARTA, he heavy. It's heavy, it is heavy. Yes, sir. Right, so they, and this is say they decide to extend um, homes across the river uh, up Thornton Road, right? So that cuts across. Uh, or a cob may decide to take it from um, Bankhead Highway around the spur and come down 78. Um, or we know that, um, it'll, um, I heard that they want to bring it out, um, Camelton Road. So if I'm sitting here, I know all, all roads lead west in, in theory. And I'm trying to anticipate them coming this way. Um, and for example, just like we, we built a transportation services center to, to as a, an exchange for uh, Greta, some kind of way that, that agreement. If we had to build a station, like, look, I can't afford no big old train like Cobb can, but if they want to bring the Thornton, I'll build them a station. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just making it up, right? I mean, it's, it's anticipated. Right. Um, and, 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 like, getting on the list, not trying to sort of come back and do some heroics um, um, after the fact, but some of this, the whole point of being part of this, um, being connected to ATL, is being able to see, okay, but where is this going? What are the intended plans so far of our, our peers that we've heard? Um, is that the type of thing we put on here, or you know, facilities, or uh, how would you frame that? Meaning, we want it on the list, and we want to be able to work with our partners. Um, they said that we could um, work with our partners, um, neighbors, um, and um, some type of joint, whatever it is, funding or um, agreement, MOU. Would, would that well, we, yeah. Well, Miguel mentioned it, and and this is the Obviously, direction we're getting from. Bad. From from ARC and ATL is 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 this list needs to be as specific as possible. In other words, <laughs> no. if we're we we can't just say uh, it's span fixed route service. They're wanting to know uh, it's span fixed route by adding a route that goes down from Fairburn Road to Lee Road, specifically like that. So it's be, okay, and the, the same thing would be true with Cobb or Martyr or, or any other agency. They would have to be that specific with what they're doing as but, well. But let me add, let me add this because to, to your specific question, in addition to this effort where there's input from all the transit agencies in the region and the ATO is going to review and, and develop the list, they will engage in a process of strategically looking at areas and aligning and they will develop the Got linkages it. there we go I go to to your question wonderful you, you, you've answered that no i get that um but okay but specifically we want to expand the fixed route all right and we know that okay at some point this little pilot program is going to go away all right so we got to find another funding source mm -hmm. right? so if i want to sit there and consider uh, a t spot so take a conversation this is not formal mm -hmm. this is kelly's a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do a T sploss, um, and we know that, uh, for example, um, we get what two, roughly two million a month uh, for the sake of the conversation um, in Kenya. Right, so that's what twenty-four million dollars a year, twelve times two, easy math. Right, 
24 to 30 million if we do 2.5. No problem. All right, so the question is, what can I do with 24 million, right? So if 2 million gets me four routes, right? 2 million gets me four routes, 24 should get me 48 routes, all things being equal. So if I do, again, so think about where we're at. I'm like, okay, we're gonna expand and we gotta be specific, right? Maybe we won't spend, go to 48 routes, I don't think we're that big, but you know, you would take some of that money and um, some of it would be expanding, right? Um, strategic, you guys would work this out, but also there may be some other operational things, facilities and stuff that we would have to be able to fill up that, that 24 million a year mm -hmm. for 10, 20, 30 years, whatever the term allows us to be able to do, if we do a whole penny. But you get my point, so some of this, that's real time, that's like, we probably need to get that. Do you know where we go after this? I mean, what, what, how would you answer that question if we expand it? How would you answer that question? That we wanna do eight routes and they're gonna be here. I mean, how, how do you answer that question? We're just now starting, but this is due on the 29th, so that means you gotta do your best to sort of strategically anticipate I mean, it's non-committal, right? We're just putting on a list that may not survive, but I'm, I'm just saying, how do you answer that question when we know that eventually we do want to expand? We know there's going to be certain services, service areas that are, certain people are not going to be met by the service that we're going to need to either tweak it or add it, maybe go a little bit more west, go a little bit more further south. I don't know. How does that get Well, right now, it, it would just be a strategic guess without us uh, yeah. implementing a, a full-blown study Yes. Um, we? And, yes, and that was us going to state to uh, Gary's comment. We definitely have, we'll have to do this study. Uh, again, continue to do the outreach to see where and who would like to do the services if we were to bring you to your area. And uh, once the transit study plan comes back, we make that assessment, we can build our routes. So, and, no, okay. and, uh, I was, I'm sorry. Yeah, just, so, what I'm hearing you say is that you know, we know inevitably. Assuming that ridership works, the system works, which we were thinking that it does, in three years, um, at that point we can go do a study and validate where to put this new route in, or new routes in, and where we go. But we're outside this. So I want to know how do I get, if I'm three years out, how do I get something that I know should be part of this, but because we can't answer the question today specifically, how do I get that in and it not be lost? Do I need their approval to expand my fixed route? I'm assuming I do. Like you, I, you want, is, I, mean, I mean, I already know the answer, but, but, yeah. but it, I, well, there, is there additional input points? That's, I'm just trying to understand yeah, the process. There are, there are additional input points. Uh, in fact, to, to just add to what uh, Gary Jamal have said, we could have, we could list as one of our projects here to do a transit, cert, transit needs analysis. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, another a project would be implementation of recommendations from the transit right. plan analysis. Okay. And so, so you okay. don't know the specifics, but they know something's coming as a result of the more detailed information that you can, don't have now, but will come later. Okay, let me hear more. You. You, you frame it, you frame the, what our intent is. Okay, I, I, that's why y'all are here. Okay, I'm there. I just wanted to better understand it that we didn't miss something. I wasn't saying that you, you didn't have it or you hadn't thought about it, but I, I feel much better about that. And I'm sure you're okay mm -hmm. with what you're hearing. Yeah, it's been okay. You're basically just you're not here. Right. But the future may right. right. But you have something on it, just placeholder. You don't know yet that it's it's coming. Right. This goes to ARC and ATL, or did they both use the same information to, to sync up? How does it work? It goes to the ATL, but the ARC and the ATL are going to work concurrently. Mm -hmm. I, I would expect it. Right. That just would. Be, yeah. that they, in fact, uh, ARC has a couple of their staff members who are all, on loan to ATL half time. I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I'm good. I want to look at this when I get a chance. But um, you need feedback within the next couple of weeks. By March the eighth. By March the eighth. Yeah. Are we going to make a recommendation? So what, what, is, what is the ask of this committee? Is this something that you want us to, because I'm sure that our colleagues will want to definitely see this list and, and, and weigh in, they will feel sort of a certain kind of way if they didn't. But we want to see this because it's so strategic and it has. So how will you get this before the Board of Commissioners? I mean, Mark, at some point, 
Thank well, you. they will definitely see it once they see the minutes for the Transportation Committee meeting. Um, but if you want a presentation or discussion specifically brought to the board, it will need to be at a work session. I understand. Uh, but you need to do this before. I'm just trying to anticipate. March 15th. Yeah, we, March 15th, but I mean, if we needed to bring it before the board on their in their second March meeting uh, before we send it to the ARC and ATL, we could do that. You need to, you need the actual courtesy. I, I just think that that would, uh, this is too big, it's too new of a process, ATL, not, I just think that, um, that my colleagues may feel a little slighted. Yeah, definitely for sending it to ATL, then it would need to be. You don't want to keep it at the committee alone. So, we're, you know, whenever you, you guys work out the administrative, how y'all want to bring it forward. And I'm sure we just got to make sure we give them our feedback accordingly, you know, before then. But please bring it I'll just plan on putting it on the agenda for that second March. You won't have it ready for the first one? Yeah, could, could you first have it ready for the first one? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Because I'm going to be gone next week. So. I, I can, I can. But you already got this, and if we got to shape it, yeah. I mean, I can present I can, as is. I mean, you, you yeah, come out well, conditional that you get to make some edits and last minute before you submit. Well, if Miguel and Jamal can work on it, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, I'll let y'all work this out. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in support. It's what the full board commission saw. Yeah, I, I would, I would feel more comfortable if, if uh, to the extent that that we need to have their input, that we give them. A, at least a little time to get back to us before we right. so before the submittal is due. Okay. Just give it as is, just like we just got it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. and then that'd be perfect. But I get your point because that's not today. Do you mind we move forward without you while you're gone? Not at all. You okay. <laughs> not gonna feel a certain, you know. <laughs> no, because I'm sure I'll hear about <laughs> it when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll so probably be calling you while you're gone. <laughs> Let's keep going. We have a couple more items still got some Yes. Here, so we, we, yeah. Okay. The, the next item uh, that we want to talk about is the uh, operational yes. realignment base structure for, yes. for DOT field staff. And one of the things, and I think I've given uh, at the last meeting, I, I went over some of the issues, and I, I'll, I'll just briefly mention those again. We have a staff that uh, between equipment operators, mostly equipment operators, some some who are um, laborers as well, but they uh, the the attrition rate is getting to be pretty high because we are competing with the WalMarts and, and the Burger and in terms of retail establishment. So. Uh, we, we talked about what it would take to bring uh, the salaries, not necessarily a full adjustment of the pay scales, but actually to provide uh, uh, an adjustment in, in salaries to make them competitive with uh, the areas uh, adjoining us. And uh, I've been working with, uh, with uh, Mr. Perry, uh, our HR director, in, in coming up with what the exposure to the county would be, uh, and Mark Teal as well. And uh, I'd like for Mr. Perry if he would uh, give us uh, an overview of what it would take to bring. Okay. I'm not just holding it. I'm 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 just holding it. It's working. David, it's just turning it out. Okay. Well, go ahead. It's cold out the hallway. Yes, it's bad. Well, uh, we had some, some really good conversation. Actually, it started off with uh, Miguel and, and Mark and myself and Madam Chair having a conversation. And um, um, uh, we came with one uh, uh, recommendation, and, uh, and uh, Coach Jones sent us back and said she wanted to compete. And she wanted to win the game. She didn't just want to tie, she wanted to win. So we went back with that mentality and we kind of, uh, you know, just took another look at uh, our recommendations. We actually were looking at uh, just half of uh, the, the titles that uh, uh, Miguel posted here. Mm -hmm. We were just looking at the bottom end of the, uh, uh, the pay structure 
a labor of twos, the equipment operator ones, and possibly twos. Uh, but uh, in our reassertion, we went back to equipment operator threes, the uh, sign and marketing techs, and the sign and marketing fabricators as well. And we decided that uh, kind of uh, uh, the, their current rates where they are, uh, and, and this all kind of uh, worked in conjunction with the uh, classification and compensation study as well. The classification and compensation study didn't quite put us where we wanted to be in terms of, uh, of, 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 of competing in our market. Now, we, that was one of the things that they asked us during the process. What do we want to do? Do we want to lead, lag, or match the market? And I believe that during that time, our strategy was to match the market. But at this point in time, and in certain areas, we do want to lead uh, uh, the market, particularly in those areas where uh, it, it's hard to keep talent, you know, which, would, which is uh, what Miguel alluded to earlier. So uh, with that being said, we thought that possibly raising uh, the minimum rate uh, just by $2 uh, for each category, labor uh, two and three, equipment operator one, and so on and so forth, would put us uh, at a starting point where we can we can uh, we can be a, a aggressive in uh, recruiting more uh, talent here. Now we were possibly looking at a range, a hiring range, in addition to that two dollars, bringing it roughly from thirteen dollars an hour to on average about fifteen dollars an hour. We were looking at a range starting at fifteen dollars an hour, going up to possibly about eighteen. So three dollars difference in between this thing. Uh, that would give us the flexibility we need to go after the, uh, the skill set that we're seeking. So uh, uh, Miguel came up with, uh, sent him some, uh, some information in regards to the positions in his uh, department. He plugged in the numbers. And Miguel, yeah, I believe your exposure says that uh, we're about 133,000. That, that is correct. To, to, to adjust all of the field staff uh, in the categories that we've been talking about, equipment operators, uh, it, it would take about a hundred. It, it would add a, another 133,000 annually. Of course, if this were, was implemented, uh, say April 1st, then it would be 75 percent of that total. That that would be the impact. But what this will do is. Uh, pull the, the people who are at the lower tier of the echelon up and uh, deal with the compression that that will create throughout the ranks. One of the things that we have found is that if you, if you look at the equipment operator categories, you will see uh, on this list that the equipment operator ones are, uh, we have a couple of vacancies there, equipment operator twos, we have three vacancies there. And uh, equipment operator four, we don't have currently any vacancies. Unfortunately, there is one individual who's going to be retiring fairly soon. Mm -hmm. But essentially what this shows is as the salaries get higher, either because of longevity or skill set, they tend to be more stable. Mm -hmm. It is the lower paying that uh, they, you know, they, they find jobs elsewhere a lot easier that pay them uh, more than what they make. So uh, that, is, that is what we're trying to address, that if we offer a competitive rate along with, with the work environment uh, uh, that, that we offer, uh, not only can we attract qualified, better qualified applicants, but they will stay with us and gain that institutional knowledge instead of going to work for Burger King making that. So when we first looked at these, we had, we only needed 29000 additional dollars because you, due to the vacancies you had, some of it we could take care of it this year. Now Correct. next year there would be an increase, but right. this year we only needed 29000 Now with our discussion earlier today about since we're starting April 1st, does that take care of the 29000 No because the number that we were working with when we had that discussion was lower than the 133. Okay. There was a number of vacant positions that were not included in the, in the tally. So, so, so we did, we were looking at a lower number 
plus um, some vacancies, some benefits and stuff. Right. This one is 133 plus benefits. It would be 133 plus benefit minus whatever percentage of the year which would you probably yes. be if we do effective April 1st, then it would be 75% you know, of this. So time. approximately, what do we use? 1.42% as a multiplier of our benefits? No, sir. What do so y'all use? It's a little higher than that. Oh, my bad. Uh, so around 17 to 20,000. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the percentage-wise. Yeah, what's the most? Well, the more you make, the less the percentage. So okay, yeah. yeah. So on average, what is it, 7%? Uh, mm -hmm. That's FICA. Okay. Yeah. All right, so whatever proxy I use, 28, uh, I was just curious. So as opposed to 133, I, I, again, I can get a quick math. So pick a number. Um, we're going to add that 30,000. Is that what I'm hearing you all say? 30 to 40,000 well, for, for benefits. But, uh, I guess, is this a fully loaded number? No, but, but let me offer my theory of relativity again. If, if this number, the 133, is for the entire year, uh, but we're looking to cut off 25% of the year, mm -hmm. so we would be covering the salary on 25% benefits mm -hmm. with this number. So Which I think we can get with finance and see what the exact number is for benefits for these employees. Well, no number, but I, I get you. One, uh, the number is one hundred thirty-three thousand for the year. For the year, maybe less than that. Maybe less if we can, if we can uh, if find out the numbers. Yeah, yeah. If twenty-five. Yeah, I, I get the nuance that work within the numbers that you got. Right. But can I get the multiple? Can you tell me what the real number is? Fully loaded. If we adjust these people up and this is the difference, there's a multiplier. Yes, we can get the number fully loaded, fully loaded minus a quarter of the year. Correct. Can we, can we model it that way? Mm -hmm. Tell me the whole number, tell me the true number, and the fact that you're doing it, implementing a, a partial year, three quarters, that's not the table to you have you have the benefits or does that come from finance? It comes from finance. Uh -huh. Can y'all work to get that? Yes, yes sir. y'all bring this forward. We can get that. Hey Mark, you talked, I guess we spoke earlier, and Nick Adams told me you we left you. But um, you said there may be some money already in DOT's budget now, with some vacancies that can cover. Because you know, when I sent you, I guess for March, BRRs, I, I, I think I spent 29000 30000 that's what our last conversation to close mm -hmm. the gap. But you figured year. those as well, the vacancies you've had so far? No. So yeah, that, that would be that that would would deduction. 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 Yeah, so whatever from January 1st up until whenever you think we're going to hire and we talked about those, so that'd be another deduction. Correct. So yeah, we can put all those in there. Mm -hmm. and it'll, be, it'll be a lot less. And then next year we'll recalculate and of all she said going into 2020, and then we could load the full number. This yes. time I believe we do have some cushion of just getting in and yes, just starting. Sure. Yeah. But we're also having that, trouble take filling that, these we, slots and keeping, yeah. Keeping people to get the work done that, that we need. Well, hopefully, we, we, we can present these numbers mm -hmm. and bring some people and recruit and retain. Okay. So, when you bring the number to the Board of Commissioners, we want the correct number. I know what Commissioner Ross is saying. We want the right number. So, yes. I don't want to say 133 and it's really 4,000. You don't tell me the real number, but, but you implementing it based on the current budget options that you have. It'll be a lot, the budget impact will be less than the fully loaded number. Right. You know what I'm saying? The budget number this year will this be year. Next year will be full, I fully loaded. I, I understand. Just, can you do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, we'll get you both numbers. Just both numbers and then fully loaded yes, and the budget impact for 2019. How you say it to the Board of Commissioners, how you present I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm cool. I get it. How y'all going to work with okay. I just need those two numbers. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Excellent. So, is there any action? We're gonna make. We need to make a recommendation to move on this one. This is material, and I, I, Madam Chair, yes. I, I'd like to um, on this one make a formal recommendation. Um, um, you know, uh, that we agree with this with transportation committee that we actually support this this uh, pay adjustment. Second. Taking the motion, please. I need a motion. Oh, I thought you made the motion. I wanted to make a motion, since he <laughs> I move that we adopt 
the recommendations for pay adjustments for the uh, DOT field staff. Second. Second. Any discussion on this? All hearts and minds are clear. Madam Chair, you importantly, you good? Very good, because we have to compete. Okay. And we need you to those numbers for finance and we will just send it. Send all those emails. All in favor say aye. Oh, sorry. Aye. Sorry for your folks. You didn't vote? I'm good with it. Okay. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. You good, Miguel? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, we got one last item to, to discuss. Uh, at the last, actually, it was the last meeting we almost got into this one. Uh, Thank you. We have a situation at, uh, and I'm sorry, this is not going to be real legible. That's uh, okay. It's, it's a graphic that you like the colors. If you like the yeah, if you if you can if you can home in on the difference in shading, the, the red yeah. color is versus the any other areas. Yeah. Uh, the situation here is that there is one particular business that seems to um, take um, a lot of the road right of way for their operation. Okay. And they have a tendency to uh, have too many patrons, too many vehicles parked in the right way. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we we did quite a bit of research. This item, from my understanding, has come up before several times uh, because of the complaints. Uh, this Cochrane Industrial Boulevard is off of uh, Veterans Memorial Highway, and it's is industrial. And, and in nature, and, and there's a, a car uh, repair service that is doing business within the boundaries of their property and within the right of way. Uh, we were approached by our code enforcement uh, folks asking for some relief in terms of setting, uh, installing signs and prohibiting parking in the right of way. And from my understanding, this has. Uh, come up before and it's been challenged by the property owner. I, I don't know to what extent you might be familiar part with the history, uh, but uh, but it is a uh, it's going to be a contentious uh, exercise if we if we go out there and install signs that you know so we're likely to get some pushback. And what I wanted to to um, get a sense from from the committee and perhaps even if necessary, uh, go to a, with a recommendation to the board, and that is to actually declare, uh, set formally a no parking zone along this uh, the entire roadway. Uh, uh, along the entire roadway. Because it, it, to the extent that we block it in front of the one property, if they move it down the street and, and mm -hmm. approach it somebody else, right. then, then we, uh, we get into an issue. So that so I'm looking for guidance or, or insight into this one, and perhaps uh, to the extent you might be familiar with the history. Um, but um, the way I've approached similar things in the past has been with a with a uh, establishing a parking zone and then letting code enforcement and or sheriff or uh, police, as the case may be, deal with the enforcement. Yeah, it ended up in the sheriff's office. So seventy eight. Where's that Henry or Han? Uh, uh, this might be Commissioner Guider now. Yeah, I think that's Guider. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I mean conforming what okay, so not conforming does what? It just induces? Uh, does it cause a public safety issue? That's some traffic what was yeah, the all the above. All of the above. What, it, it's it's a it's a nuisance from the standpoint of other operations, but generally they can get by. But on occasion there is parking that actually blocks the road, and, and they have difficulty getting to their own businesses. And so they will call in either the sheriff or code enforcement, and uh, they don't have the ability to tow the vehicles because there are no signs out there. There's not not an established no parking. Zone. So right now you're just trying to get a feel for it. Mark, what, what say if the, I mean, 
Not that it could be. Yeah, in the past, we've established the no parking zones where we had a lot of trouble. Last one I remember was uh, some corner of Thornton Road and 78. So we down there. Yeah. Southwest corner around that. Some of those businesses right there. We yeah. some car lots or yep. some um, repair places. So or now, right at the beginning of Mount Vernon. So we'll be able to use, you share what, what you've done in times past. Are you recommending that we uh, put a no parking as the first step and begin to work through our process, which gives a little bit more power to your code enforcement and then share the depth of that? Yeah, that, that's what I'm suggesting. Uh, in, in some instances, the, uh, uh, the designation of the route has to be embedded in, in the code. Yep. Uh, I don't know that we necessarily have to go that route here because if if it has to be listed in the code in a section of the code uh, due to formal action, then we got to go through the public hearing process. Are there no parking zones listed in the code? There is well, there is a section that would have them there if they exist. I, I don't yeah, know, I don't think. but 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 it's not there. But it's not there. So yeah. so then if if. If they do not have to be uh, specific, uh, specifically embedded in the code, then that's actually eliminates the public hearing component. So, so I would I would then put this as an item, package it as an action item for the board to uh, to approve or to consider approving a no parking zone all around Carpenter Industrial. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to. Do My position is that I would support uh, you moving forward with that, but bring it before the full board of commissioners because I think there's a home rule to this, and I would like to see you know, Madam Guider's thoughts on this. So, you know, I'm sure she probably will not object, but I don't want to speak for her. So, um, is, is, there, is this time sensitive? Um, it isn't real time sensitive, uh, but obviously. Uh, the, uh, the business owners in that area would like some relief as quickly as we can. Do you need Board of Commissioners approval? Is this more of an administrative action y'all can take as far as the executive branch, or do you really need our legislators to sort of, I mean, are you already empowered with this authority to put up no parking? There is possible. I think, isn't there a no parking on county right away as a whole anyway? Yeah. Only for certain weight vehicles. It's not for all the vehicles. It's uh, commercial vehicles in residential zone. There is a prohibition yeah. blanket like yeah, that. I knew that. But I, I thought I don't there was know. one where you had to provide space off site for parking. You couldn't park on the roadway, which would have been more in Russell's yeah. code. As long as that's in the code, then technically, I mean, it's a blanket over the whole county. We just need to go install no parking signs, which triggers. The sheriff's way. office. Sheriff's right. office will not write any tickets unless there's an actual sign. Makes sense. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So that may be the case. That is the case here. That okay. That neither the sheriff's office they nor code enforcement can actually provide relief because of the situation. Yeah. yeah. But I think I'm pretty sure we didn't check with Russell. Pretty sure his code says there's no parking on the right way. It's just that they can't enforce it without signs. If that's the case, then all we do is just go put signs up. Yeah, I mean, it's what you already do. Yeah. Um, but your intent well, was to bring it on? It, it, it depends. It, it, we, we can confirm because because they're, depending on how your code is written, and I, and I probably should have done the research on this, it may be that to designate a road for no parking requires legislative the board. Uh, yeah, let's confirm that. Confirm it, but I'm okay putting it on the agenda for the full board to talk about it, but just have that answer for us. Mm -hmm. okay. And if it doesn't require full board approval, okay. we can yeah, take it off. We can just talk to Commissioner Geiger yeah. That's fine. and give her a heads up. Right, because you already have your authority. Sure she's okay with it. So those signs, do, do, like, do you have a budget for those signs? Like, how, how would we do that? Like, we, we get some signs. Signs, the signs show. Yeah, we, we have a budget. Mm -hmm. that we would, 
produce them. We got a sign shop? Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we, we have been, we we have been displaced uh, due to the uh, fire. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the moment, we're, we're not as functional as we would like to be, but when we when we're functional, we can, we can handle this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, good Anything else needs to come before this committee? No, sir. I think the agenda is satisfied. Uh, Tony Mitchell, Madam Chair, any final comments before we adjourn this meeting? No, sir. It was good. Very, very good. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, everybody. This meeting stands adjourned. Thank you.